kids, Miss Block here, and today we're going to talk about sedimentary rocks. It would be a good idea to have your earth science reference tables handy, turn to page 7, where all the sedimentary rocks are, and also you might want to have this pink sheet out in front with you too, to help you look at some of the key vocabulary that are important in reviewing rocks. As always, you can pause and rewind this video again if you want to go over any concepts that you might have had trouble with or you want to hear repeated. Ready? Let's get started. So, as we're well aware, minerals are the building blocks of rocks. And we have our three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Now, minerals, as we said, are classified by their composition. Igne our rocks here, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, they're organized by their method of formation or their origin. How do they become rock, the rocks that they are? Today, we're going to be looking at sedimentary rocks. Now, sedimentary rocks are rocks that form when sediments are deposited, buried, compacted, and cemented together. They tend to form, or usually form, underwater. So, right here, we can see on our reference tables, page 6, how a sedimentary rock would form. So right here, we have our little rectangle highlighted for you, and we need to make sure we can make some sediments. So whatever rock we're working with needs to be broken down into those sediments, because we cannot just directly become a sedimentary rock. We have to become those broken bits of other rocks. So we need to have those rocks uplifted or moved from underneath the ground and pushed up in some cases, and then broken down via weathering, and then maybe transported to a new location through erosion. We now have our sediments, which then will be deposited or dropped off, buried, compacted together, and cemented or glued together to form that rock. This is what sediments are, broken bits of rocks. We don't just say dirt or sand arbitrarily. We actually have size designations and classifications when we're talking about sediments. And we'll see that a little bit more on page 7 of our reference tables in a little bit. Now, there's certain observable characteristics of sedimentary rocks. There'll be layers or strata, like in this rock right here of sandstone. They may be made up of bits of other rocks, just like this sample right here of conglomerate. They contain fossils like right here, and they can be made of fossils like this rock right here. This is actually made up of fossils, and we call it bioplastic. And we'll hear a little bit about that in a tiny bit. Please note, sedimentary rocks are the only rocks to contain fossils. Igneous rocks, they have to get to that magma stage, so we have to melt them. So if there was a fossil stored in there, it would get destroyed. Likewise, metamorphic, there's so much heat and pressure, more pressure than we'd have for that compaction with sedimentary, that the fossil would be destroyed. Also, some of that partial melting. Now, we have three types of sedimentary rocks that we're going to look at right here. Our first type is clastic sedimentary rocks, and clastic means fragments. And these are rocks composed of bits of other rocks and sediments. So here are some examples of clastic sedimentary rocks. We have some beautiful samples right here where we can actually see the individual bits cemented together. Sometimes they'll be uniform in size, like this piece of sandstone I have here, or like this piece of shale I have over here. Okay, If we look at page 7 of our scheme for sedimentary rock identification, you'll see at the top is where we find our clastic or fragmental rocks. Right here at the top, we'll find the set rock samples, or our sedimentary rocks, that have the largest sediments. Realize that conglomerate, the sediments are going to be rounded a bit due to the exposure to running water. While Brescia is going to have angular sediments because it formed in a dry environment. Sandstone, siltstone, and shale will have sediments that are uniform in size. And we can see that grain size found over here. So conglomerate will have just a random assortment of like pebbles, um, cobbles, and boulders, all different sizes, while well, sandstone will have sand, siltstone will have silt, shale will have clay. We can find out that it'll have fragments of a variety of different rocks for the composition, so the composition will vary. We also have some special comments here to help us figure things out with our various 
rocks that will help us identifying them. Don't forget that the map symbols are here because they do show up from time to time. You'll be like, what rock is that? You just need to look at the map symbol. It will help. We also have chemical sedimentary rocks. And these are rocks composed of crystals of just one mineral that form by evaporation and or precipitation of dissolved minerals. So evaporites are one type of chemical sedimentary rock. And they form when minerals are dissolved in water, the water evaporates, leaving minerals behind. We would see this with rock salt right here. So this is what happens when halite is dissolved in water. The water evaporates, and all the halite that was dissolved will join together into a giant crystal, and we call it rock salt. The same thing will happen with this sample here. This is rock gypsum. So when gypsum is dissolved into water, this will form. Okay, and precipitates form from the precipitation of dissolved minerals in water without the water having to evaporate first. We can find information about these various rocks on our reference table right here near the top. Again, don't forget about the map symbols. They are very useful in trying to identify some of our rocks. And we can see the crystal the texture is crystalline, fine to coarse crystals. They're not made up of individual grains in this case. We have our composition, and they're telling you that these three are chemical precipitates and evaporites. And limestone, though, is a unique case because we can have it form one of two ways. And let's talk about the other way that limestone can form. It can be a bioclastic sedimentary rock. And these are rocks composed of once living things. So if we look at this sample right here, and I'm going to move this right over there, we have right here bioclastic limestone. This is not a Rice Krispie treat. You bite on this, you're going to crack your teeth. This right here, though, you can see individual shells that were cemented together to form this rock. Right here we have coal, and this is the fossilized remains of plants, hence the name fossil fuels. We can see them right here on our reference table and they're telling us the characteristics of how they form. Again, limestone is made up of calcite, bituminous coal is made up of pure carbon, and they're also giving you the comments of where the um, materials that make up these rocks came from. Well, I hope this was helpful, and again, make sure you look over your vocabulary sheet about sedimentary rocks, make sure you know what that vocabulary means, Again, rewatch this if you have any questions. Thank you.